All right, we are here for a very special conversation, a celebration of sorts with Scroobius yeah. Pip. Hello, Pip. Hello, mate. How are you? I went I'm to very say well. sir then. I don't know why. And then I switched to <laughs> mate. Hello, mate. <laughs> Hello, mate. Uh, I'm very well. I'm excited. Um, this is, I think, the first time I ever listened to your podcast, if you'd said that in five years or six years or seven years or eight years, however long it's been, yeah. that we'd be sat here 500 episodes later having a big old chat about it. I'd be very excited. But this is why we're here. 500 yeah. episodes of Distraction 500 Pieces. episodes. And it's weird, isn't it? Because also you were a listener before we knew each other. Yeah. And now we work on loads of different things together, primarily yeah. Pod Bible. So, um, yeah, it seemed like a perfect time and place to have a, ch a chat about it all. Yeah, it's perfect. Obviously, I've spoken to loads of podcasters since we started Pod Bible, and occasionally I'll speak to people where I know the podcast pretty well. Yeah, uh, but I reckon this is probably the one where I'm almost most most prepared because uh, mm. I, I was listening from day one. I can I can picture exactly where I was listening to that first episode. Tell me, that's out. so weird because this came up yeah. when because me and, and Buddy Peace have done the 500th episode, um, yeah. and he was saying about a couple of specific episodes where he knows where he was. Mm. when he heard him and that could be really weird with podcasts can't it because it, yeah will definitely a real memory thing but yeah yeah tell me, tell me well it was the 13th of october 2013 mm -hmm. it was with russell brand of course did yeah. you release a couple of episodes straight away or did you just put out that one i can't oh, remember no, i put out that one but i announced the first four straight right. away i recorded four because it was like i'd never done a podcast before and podcasts were still quite new i wanted to get as i wanted to do one every week i wanted yeah. to get a bit of a buffer in and a bit of a back catalog so i'm i'm safe so, so yeah i released them weekly still it was dead every wednesday but i announced it was russell brand alan moore's zane low and dj yoda yeah um, amazing start so yeah big names yeah i remember i mean it's nothing exciting i was just literally just sat in my bedroom but i remember uh, I used to listen to a few podcasts then, but it was still pretty early days. You yeah. know, most people weren't listening to podcasts. Yeah. Um, and I remember it coming out and uh, I used to listen to the beat down when you were on XFM mm -hmm. uh, and was into that. And I sat on my bed and just listened to the whole episode and was just like, this is fucking cool because yeah. this is like a proper <laughs> conversation. It's not an interview. And I yeah. guess, I mean, I'd love to get an idea of what the plan was when you first started, like what was the plan for the podcast? I know a bit about the history and why it came about, but what was it always just to have those big open expansive conversations? Well, that was exactly it. Yeah. It came kind of more from my music career than from my radio career as such. Cause mm. in, mu in music, we were seeing more and more like we've got a new single out or whatever, and we'll go and do an, a pre-recorded interview at six music. And then they'll take like a 30 second clip from that yeah. and that'll be on the news or whatever and it's like oh that's dope it's getting used but i would listen and think if it's a band i like i want to hear more from them i don't want to hear a 30 a second clip and the guys at six were always amazing so we'd have these really good conversations and then all that would ever really see the light of day would be a soundbite and it yeah. just kind of felt that's weird and i I'd, I'd started listening to a lot of podcasts at that point. Um, and yeah, I felt there was a hunger for longer conversations. And it's one of the reasons I had Zane Lowe early on the list, because I think he was a master of it. He'd started to do his his long interviews on Radio yeah. 1, where he'd do an hour with Kanye or, or, or Rage Against the Machine or whomever else, the Beastie Boys. Um so I thought he was the perfect what one of the perfect people to talk to early, because he has to do those and he, he use those short soundbite things. But clearly, he's someone who has a passion for these deeper dives and conversations. So yeah, it was exactly that. I just thought there was there had to be a, a, a an audience for it, and yeah, it really quickly got f far bigger than my radio show on commercial radio was and <laughs> kind of proved that point i guess yeah i, th I think it's easy to forget the, the sort of the state we're in now with how many different podcasts there are yeah. and how many different interview podcasts there are yeah and how many guests you get popping up on different shows and even mm -hmm. let's say somebody's bringing out a book 
and then uh, that week when the book's released, they're on four different podcasts. Yes. And you're maybe ha- hearing them having similar conversations or bringing up similar anecdotes, and you're getting a little bit of that press junket feel nowadays. Yeah. But when you first started out, it was really rare to be having those, hearing those conversations, and you would there be getting guests where you hadn't heard anywhere. Yeah, there weren't any of those l- long. Like the Alan Moore one in particular was yeah. like no one had really had there was written interviews and stuff but and obviously he wrote he writes a lot but there weren't many like 90 minute audio conversations with yeah. Alan Moore who's like an icon of, of 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 comic books of literature of all these things um so yeah it felt right and it's I completely feel you on that the promo run thing that we get more these days mm. and it makes me jealous of off menu of all these other ones who have a format of films to be buried with of these ones yeah. that have a format because it doesn't matter if you've heard if you're hearing john kearns or or firm brady on off menu and on films to be buried with and you know what i mean because they're going to be completely different whereas yeah. if you hear them on distraction pieces and richard herring and adam buxton there might be some crossover because we're going to be talking about the same things from a book yeah. or whatever else. So yeah, it, it it makes me a little je- jealous now of not coming up with like again off the beaten tracks. Another one hardcore uh, 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 list in our our, our co pod bible uh, creator always comes up with a concept rather than just oh let's have some conversations and. Yeah, but in those early days, as you say, there weren't many people just having conversations, so it didn't seem yeah. quite so uh, normal. Yeah, I think that's interesting because with interview podcasts, I think a lot of time some people can sort of think, well, that's pretty easy. They're literally just pressing record and they're chatting. Mm. But obviously, you know, when you've got the format of moving on, okay, what's your main course or you yeah. know, what's the song with the best intro or yeah. what's the film that, you know, aroused you most or whatever, yeah, <laughs> whatever yeah, the yeah, question yeah, yeah. is that brett asked um you do have that backup so if something you know if an answer dries up you're like okay mm-hmm. well i've got the next question lined up and yeah. i'm interested to know with yours because you know you're you're going into these conversations sometimes with these massive a-list celebrities sometimes with total unknown people who don't have any kind of profile at all mm-hmm. when it comes to your prep how do you strike the balance between between being you know over prepared, under prepared. I know you do do a lot of prep. Yeah, I think I think over prepared is a myth. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, I'll I'll tend to do all my prep the day before or within tw- in, or within twenty four hours. Sometimes if I'm recording in the afternoon, I'll do it the morning of, just so yeah. I can do tons of prep, but it's fresh in my head, so I'm not just having to to read notes constantly or constantly refer to notes so it can be more conversational and when that lands it's perfect because you see it particularly in the guests that i don't know personally you see it in their eyes when they start talking on something and i can go yeah and that was around the time of this or that was was when you were doing that and they know that they can relax it's like all right we're not just because again the press junket thing and i'm sure i'm sure we'll talk about that more because the first hundred or so i didn't do any press junkets maybe the first 200 but the press junket thing's interesting because they get excited when they realize it's not just someone from i don't want to name anything but someone from a big yeah, a big yeah. brand who are just going to ask the standard questions about the film that they're they're currently there to talk about yeah the fact is i will always give enough time to their current film or current book or whatever else but the the second they realize that we're going all over the place and we're talking about their whole career or their passions or their life or these other things you do see the excitement in their eyes and i've i've said it before but i owe a lot to michael fassbender and eddie izzard because they're two that were early on on me getting slots on press junkets because i had years of being offered slots on press junkets but i'd always say oh i need an hour and they'd say, we've got your 20 minutes. And I'd say, I'm not coming. Yeah, that's no not point. how it works. So the, 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 they were the first two. I think I got 50 minutes with each of them. And I was like, right, that's near enough. And they they both 
r- r- raved about the interview to the press team. Like it was their favorite interview of the day. And that gets you far more l- leniency. If they can go to the, the management or whatever and go, look, this is a long slot, but tr- trust me, it's worth it. Yeah. Um, it really helps. So, yeah. I remember both of those. Yeah, uh, those interviews, they were both fantastic. And what's interesting now is that it seems that press teams are now factoring in podcasts a whole lot more. Like you'll yeah, see, um, you'll, you'll see people who have got something to promote doing the rounds on the big podcasts and then yeah. and, and going on the ones that do have some sort of format. So they'll spend 10 minutes talking about their new whatever it is and 50 minutes, you know, talking about music or food or. Yeah. But it's, Again, uh, it's, I think it's the realization that it's not the time that's taxing. It's what you're doing. Yeah. Doing 20 interviews where you're answering the same question and saying the same sound bite and anecdote every time makes a press day really drag. Genuinely, if you break that up with a 50 minute interview where you're actually enjoying a conversation, it makes the, the those 20 all easier to handle, you know? So yeah. it's weird that you think adding an hour to an already long press day is going to make it drag more. It's like, no, my experience has been that when they go well, it makes the rest of the day easier because you've you've had that kind of b- b- break from the monotony of, yep, the album comes out on this date. Yep, this song's about this. Yep. Yeah, you know, makes sense. Um, yeah, so I am interested in talking about sort of your, your approach because I know, as you said, early days, you didn't really want to do uh, the press junket stuff, which made mm. sense when it was just 20 minutes here or there. Mm. But also the fact that you were always keen to meet everybody face to face. Yeah. And how, you know, obviously the whole landscape's changed over the last five years or so, but COVID was a huge thing that messed with everybody's plans for how they wanted to be recording podcasts. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, some people won't be aware. You you didn't really want to do that, did you? You didn't want to record no. over Zoom. You even missed out on some big guests in the early days that you I could have recorded off for with. for ages. I missed out on some big guests and big names. Because, um, again, particularly pre-pandemic, Z- 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 Zoom wasn't really a thing. No. It was, we would have been doing it over the phone s- somehow. And I always had options on that because the people at XFM were still really helpful s- so I could have got a studio that can have a phone line in and all this kind of thing. But mm-hmm. yeah, I wasn't up for any of them. And I turned down some some huge names. The the one that I, I know I've mentioned to you before was was Tina Turner. The, yeah. That Tina Turner was offered and they were like, it needs to be over the phone. I was like, look, where is Tina Turner? I'll fly there. I'll pay for flights. I'll do all of this. And we almost made it work. And then she had a bit of a, a health dip. So it, it didn't happen. But wow! at that point, rather than jump on Zoom or on the phone, I was willing to spend a few hundred quid or more than that on hotels and stuff as well. Yeah. It was like, no, to, to have that conversation, um, I'll do that. And now I would totally be like, yeah, let's jump on Zoom, mate. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Just get on Zoom and make it work. But it was interesting how that worked as well. And the the guest drunk cast episodes helped that because before I was accepting of having a guest on zoom, we did a load of drunk casts, but with Stu and Chris, so for anyone who doesn't know the drunk casts are a thing I started to do at Christmas because in December, it's really hard to get guests. Um, and you don't know if people are going to be, be listening or not. So you don't want to get a big guest and it feel like it's wasted or gets missed. Yeah. So, so me and a couple of my mates had have a few drinks, record for f- 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 four or five hours, and put it out all over the, the Christmas and New Year period, um, and they became really popular. So, as I said, my kind of my emer- my emergency break gl- 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 glass moment when the pandemic hit was I hit up Ramesh Ranganathan and Brett Goldstein and said, are you, "Are you up for jumping on Zoom and doing a drunk cast with me and Chris and Stu?" I hit up. Ed Gamble and James Acaster, are you up for it? I hit up Jade Adams and Rich Wilson, are you up for it? And it gave me a good good buffer because it meant that we had a good month or two of really good podcasts with really yeah. good people in a really weird situation. Great moments. And they had, that was it. They had some moments that were the best moments from all the drunk casts. And that made me go, oh, well, 
if you do it right, you can still get that connection over a screen. Yeah. And, and when I started doing them, I found at times it was better than it would have been in person. Um, chatting to <laughs> the lead s- singer of sl- Slipknot while he's in his bed. Um, we got a far <laughs> yeah. more relaxed conversation than we would have got on a press junket in a hotel room. Um, same with Amanda Amanda Abington in, in her living room at home. It felt right. This could actually be a good cheat code because a lot of them, I again, before I did any press junkets, Z- Zane Lowe's I recorded in his kitchen, Alan Moore's I recorded in his, his living room, Russell Brand's I recorded in his, his living room. So when it was people I know, it was easier to say, oh, I'll come round your house. Yeah. When it's someone you don't know, it's far harder to convince a management <laughs> yeah. and press team to go, that's nah, all right, I'll just come round their house. Like, yeah, exactly. No, you won't, mate. <laughs> Give me their address, I'll pop <laughs> you, over. You definitely won't be coming <laughs> round their house. So, yeah. Yeah, so the 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 kind of, and again, I've, I've, I've got, I think I've got good at finding the way in those hotel room ones to break the ice and to make it comfortable and to make it more of a, a conversation. But yeah, Zoom definitely helped going, right, actually, we're getting them at home and they're just taking an hour break from their family. that They've not done hair and makeup and are here presenting yeah. to a film crew as well and all these other things. So yeah, work and nicely. They do, they do tend to throw up some of these moments that just really add to it. I think initially, I think when, before, before everybody was doing Zoom calls mm-hmm. and people got relaxed with the fact that doorbells will go or people yeah. will walk into the room there was a fear of that thinking well that's not very professional if if somebody comes and knocks on the door then that's going to seem like i'm not taking this seriously but yeah. they actually add lovely moments Adds no i it. think uh, obviously there was an amazing moment in one of those drunk casts where somebody came into chris's room yeah. and that was an absolutely that wouldn't have happened if you were all in a it studio have, together. yeah exactly it's an absolute i think it's my favorite drunk cast moment of all time it's yeah definitely the most <laughs> so good i've laughed in years the most i've seen brett laugh or ramesh laugh like yeah as a as a group and Stu and yeah it was amazing um and yeah I think those moments can add things like when I had Tim Key on recently and he got an Amazon delivery and we could talk about what he'd got on his, like, in, yeah. his, his in his Amazon delivery and have a little uh conversation so yeah I think all those things yeah work nicely it'd be interesting and now all of the most of the press junket teams that I'd still doing the hotel ones also have the setup for zoom so right where i've continued to be quite covid cautious i've done a few that the person is in the hotel room press junket situation with a banner behind them of the film they're promoting but i'm in my living room yeah and we're over zoom and it and again it still works nicely yeah Brilliant. I'm thinking of the um, Kerry Godleman episode of Chatterbix when mm-hmm. she was constantly having a builder coming and knocking yeah. on the door. Yeah. And it was really disruptive. But it, yeah. if anything, it sort of showed more of her personality. She, like <laughs> yeah, she was just yeah. at home dealing with tradesmen. A hundred percent. And it showed their personality in that they're not going to edit yeah. around any of this. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear. Yeah, absolutely. So good. How, how do you deal with the the sort of the downsides of doing it this way, though? Because I'm sure, and I, I mean, I know you have from hearing you on the podcast, and obviously your amazing producer, Buddy Peace, sometimes has to do some some work okay. to to salvage audio. If you get somebody who might have bad internet or might not have remembered to plug in a, a microphone or doesn't have any headphones or all that kind of jazz, yeah. that can that must be hard to start a conversation with or, those kind of difficulties. Yeah, I've 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 cancelled a few where it's right. been at the start is clearly not the tech spec that I like in, in the email ahead of time. I'll always say all I require is you to have headphones in yeah. decent internet and some way of recording outside of, of our zoom call. So mm-hmm. an iPhone with a voice memos app, that's all you need. Like any smartphone with a voice memos app. And then yeah. we've got a backup and then we've got options. So I've had times where they've not got, any of that stuff and we've tried to make it work and I've decided to walk away because it feels stupid to spend an hour talking when I know we're probably not going to be able to release it um so yeah I've had that a couple of times I've had to be quite cutthroat and say I'm sorry lads (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. it's not gonna work um 
But yeah, we've not had too many nightmares. And as you say, I think as a listener, pre-pandemic, if a guest was on the phone, I'd be like, oh, I can't be bothered with this. The sound quality is not good enough and all that. I've chilled to it a lot more because of the everything had to go that way and it stopped being so harsh, I guess. It's a it's a weird one. But yeah, Buddy Peace will generally be able to, to polish most things. The one we came closest to recording and not releasing was John Hathaway, MMA uh, fighter called John Hathaway, because we had some... Right. Again, he was just on his iPad, I think, um, and didn't have headphones but could record a backup, but then my voice is going to be in the backup. But yeah, it, it, it was a bit of a nightmare audio and Buddy was like, look, I'm going to see what I can do today and then I'll let you know if we've got an episode this week or not. And he, he made it work. Again, it wasn't the best sound in the world, but he got it more than, than listenable. So yeah. Good old Buddy. Always but the biggest thing buddy. I miss is the is is the collection of Polaroids. Yes. Yeah. Right, so, in fact, hang on. I'm going to do an ex- a Pod Bible exclusive here. Just give me half a second. Oh, here we go. It's going to be the album. What is the? Oh, what are these? All the cut out faces. These okay. are all the cut out faces that I've had <laughs> to put on my wall over the years. Yeah, um, so if people go on Pip's Instagram, I mean, I want to talk about this anyway, but your social media and just how you've managed to keep this up every single week. Yeah. And it's very satisfying, your social media, uh, your Instagram grid in particular, if people yep. go and check that out. Yep. Obviously, you used to get Polaroids. You actually had a proper Polaroid camera. It, uh, it, it was one of the drives to get a Tina Turner on. Because I was like, imagine the Polaroid of me with Tina Turner. It's mind-blowing. <laughs> yeah. That's why yeah. I wanted to go in person. I was like, I can't do it over the phone because I wouldn't get the Polaroid. And that's just, I've got all the Polaroids in these, like, bound books over there. I've got a, a, a yeah, shelf of them amazing. now. Um, but, yeah, yeah, the Polaroids are a key part of it. But then obviously you moved to Zoom. Uh, did you consider sort of taking photos of the screen and that didn't work? And then you Yeah, there's the first few, out? the drunk cast ones are... Pol- because it is a proper old Polaroid, I still yeah. use that. So the, it's a trying to get a good picture of a screen <laughs> with a flash. So I like obviously that. I'd record the video. So I'd try and I'd then after we're done, I'd get the video up and try and take a photo. But they yeah. all look shit. So it was I can't remember who the first one was, but it was after the drunk casts. I um yeah I went for right. I'm going to try printing out their face, putting it on the wall in my garden um with blue tack and taking a, a selfie as if yeah. they're there as if it's as <laughs> as if we're getting to do it and yeah and i saw that wall the other day and it's riddled with blue tack you, you, <laughs> so you i was like, like what's that oh, what's all that i was like that's why i do the polaroids you're like oh shit okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's covered in blue tack yeah <laughs> But I mean, honestly, if if people do go and look at Pip's Instagram, and I'm sure people will be familiar, the organisation to have all those posts in the way that you do, it's very satisfying. It's but, satisfying to me. Very uh, few people see it because who goes on the actual grid? But in the grid, for those who don't know, I line up. So I do a Polaroid for the first post of every of every yeah. new podcast, and then I make these kind of black images from press shots for i normally do three po- three more posts over the over the week it's out um but i make them all line up and they've lined up originally that i'd just make sure the three line up i wouldn't w- w- worry about every episode ever lining up but at some point over the pandemic i think i was on instagram too much i was like right i'm just going to make all of them line up so yeah it's one yeah. long b- b- black strip of images. Then there's it the Polaroids it is scattered good. in there. And I think actually, because a lot, I mean, I was I was talking about this the other day. A lot of people have, you know, there are a bit, a lot of long running podcasts out there now on this pit. Mm-hmm. Things like, uh, you know, Rich, Richard Herring's Less Square Theatre podcast. Obviously, yeah. uh, I don't think Buxton's got to 500 yet, has he? But then he did Adam no, Joe. So. Um, there's all sorts of American shows that have been around for ages. Um, getting to 500 is a massive achievement, but I think the biggest achievement is the fact that you've done it every single week. You haven't missed a Wednesday. In, yeah. I mean, you're entering your ninth year now. That's mad. How yeah. close have you come to missing a Wednesday through illness or recordings not happening? Or have you... well, a few different times. 
never through illness but when the pandemic hit obviously as i said there was panic when i had to go and and film in canada for seven months yeah. time zones and everything i ended up doing a load of kind of um i did a spoken word gig in on a trip to la once i did a spoken word gig in my airbnb because i was like right i need to, to get to something get this, out this, this, this wednesday and then interestingly because of some filming stuff i've had i'm close to missing episode 501 um and it's just occurred to me it occurred to me yesterday i was like oh i've not done an ask pip episode in about three years i used to quite regularly do a listener's questions thing so i'm probably gonna yeah yeah (laughs) just take this out um see I'm, i'm gonna do an ask pip one i think because yeah i had a load of stuff building up to a filming week and then I'm away for a couple of days and we had the 500. Yeah, it's all just been a bit hectic mm. that I've got a load of episodes lined up, but none of... I've not been able to record them because of other schedule stuff. So, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking I'll do an Ask Pip one on my own just to keep the streak alive. That's a good idea. You haven't done one of those for ages. No. They were always popular. I they were really lots of people getting involved. Popular, but, you know, I... The thing that excites me about the podcast is the guests yeah, having the conversations. I'm not that excited about me if it was, you know, that doesn't fire me up. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I forget to do those every now and then. Um, another thing I did when I was going to Canada, I think, was I recorded a load of a behind a behind the album episodes. And that was, again for fear of if i'm stuck for a guest or, or miss a week i'll have this so i'd pick in I'd, i recorded them all at home before I, I went to canada and i just went through track by track a particular yeah. album of mine um and then yeah w- w- would put that out and also there was a thought there of there's a load of people who are into my music who aren't into the podcast and a load of people who are into the podcast who weren't into my music so uh, let's try and and cross these over a bit but yeah yeah, exactly. That works well. Um, it's good that you've mentioned guests, though, because that's a good segue into uh, sort of talking about some of the specific guests. Yeah. Who have you hated the most, though? No. Uh, <laughs> I'd love to know. Um, well, I asked you a couple of these things beforehand, so you could have put a little bit of thought into it. Mm-hmm. But um, I mean, you have spoken to some mega stars, some massive A-listers, yeah. and I know some of them you've become familiar with and friendly with. Yeah. Um, and whenever I've spoken to somebody for the Pod Bible podcast who I've really respected, you quickly realize that they're, unless they're awful people, that they, they're just normal people like you and yeah. I, and you can get to grips with it. But which episode or episodes or people you've spoken to were you the most nervous about before going into? Well, I was thinking about this and I don't want recency bias to come in. So I've got two answers. Okay. And the earliest one is James McAvoy. Okay, that yeah. was the first time I was doing a press junket, I think. Yeah, professional. Um, and he's a big name. We didn't have any connections or, or, or previous interactions. Again, a lot of people I'm kind of, even if I don't know them well, we've either got some mutual friends or... I know they're aware of my music or whatever else. So, yeah. But yeah, that one was really nerve wracking going in. And again, I was nervous that I was doing a press junket and that only give me, I think of that one, it was 40 minutes or 45 minutes. And it's the most I'd come down ever at that point. And I was like, is this going to be a, sh- a shit episode? Is Are all my listeners going to get annoyed that it's a great name, but you're just doing a boring yeah. fucking ITV style press junket? Generic like, questions and yeah. stuff. Yeah. But he was great. And, I had some really interesting, I think, angles on stuff, and we got to kind of vibe on it, on it all a bit, and talk about mental health. He was promoting Split, yes, which is the M Night one. one, and I'd been reading some really interesting stuff about the brain and about personalities and about compartmentalization in the brain. I'd had Wim Hof on recently, and Wim Hof talked about kind of compartmentalizing your pain receptors and all and and the control that uh, 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 that you can have how 
how there's so much of the brain that's untapped. Like, and his he'd say he can con- Wim Hof would claim he can control his immune system with his mind, which sounds yeah, ridiculous. I that. But the way I would kind of get my head around that would be like, right, well, we've all had that experience when we've had a really long run of work, and then as soon as it's over, we get ill. Our body has been going. We've not got time to get sick at the moment. So it has been controlling it. It's been subconscious rather than conscious. So I brought all that up, and we were talking about that because his character's in Split. One of them would be, like, super strong, and one of them wouldn't. And I'd be like, that seems ludicrous and sci-fi, but there's some stuff there, and there's some science to back it up. So, yeah, I felt I'd done enough prep to get through that, and that was good. But the other one was recently was... was Gaspar Noé, because mm. Gaspar Noé is my favourite director of all time. He's known for being kind of edgy and crazy and zany and weird. They hit me up with 24 hours notice. If that, I think. I think they hit me up in an evening and said, are you up for doing it tomorrow afternoon? And I was like, normally on that sh- a short notice, I'd say no, because normally I'd, I'd, I'd want to the, have the right amount of time but because it was Gaspar, I was like, all right. Got to do it. Let's do it then. Um, again, I felt, because I'm a super fan, I felt I had enough knowledge anyway. But I went into that dead nervous. And it was another one of those ones where the Zoom call ended. And I was beaming because I was like, it it worked. It, 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 yeah. it went okay. I don't think I made a fool of myself. I think we had a good conversation. Um yeah. quite nice in a way to have that as a like an intense period of uh nerves yeah. rather than you've got like a month before or two months and it's building up and building yeah. up and building up a little bit of exclusive another pod barbell exclusive after we f- finished i said to him that was great man and i'm an actor i'd love to work with you at some point and he was like this this sounds fantastic get my email or get your email over to the the PR people and we'll get in touch. I'm going to be in London in a few weeks, come along, all that kind of thing. So I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> and then I got invited along to a screening of his where he was doing a QA and a and then I went backstage afterwards and I felt I made a complete cunt of myself. Uh, <laughs> no, I, felt I, I just didn't, I didn't have anything to say, man. I'm far better as, as you know, I'm not the most social of people. It's why the podcast works because it's a prepped thing yeah, and this. Yeah. And we we were backstage and we kind of stood there and I was like, You're right. Oh, we had that podcast chat. He's like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I was like uh, <laughs> uh, um, where are you off to next? Are you is oh we're doing yeah, we're doing we're going off to America next. Like, yeah. Uh, because oh, we'd had no. all the conversation in the podcast. It was all yeah. there. So I was so excited to like let's secure this in person and then we'll make films together and be, be, be wonderful friends. And I've probably overthought it, but in my mind, I came away from that going, ah, fuck, this, 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 this doesn't feel how it felt after I hang up on that Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is interesting though, because obviously when you started the podcast, you weren't an actor or you, had you had, no, had you done anything? No. And you had, Hadn't. was it even in your mind that you were going to do it at that stage? Not really. It was, I mean, the Riz Ahmed episode and the Paddy Considine episode, they were both mm. ones where I can never remember what conversations ha- happen on podcast and happen off podcast, but R- R- Riz had always been encouraging me to move into acting. We had done a few different things and he'd encouraged that. But it was after that podcast, he set me up with a meeting with his manager. And right. Paddy was another one talking to Paddy and hearing how he had zero experience when he started and just got into it and just made films and learned. And then at some point he decided he, he wanted to get more training and then some of it worked and some of it didn't and all this kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah, those two episodes are a big part of my journey kind of into acting really. Yeah. But I can imagine that now, obviously when you're speaking to like, like with Gasper, when you're speaking to directors uh, or even other actors and stuff, you know, you, you're probably... I don't know. Would you say you're more aware of sort of making that good impression because it could lead to things? I'm you know, aware you... when I do make that that good impression, but I've also got to learn that it doesn't really mean anything. The yeah James Mangold episode and the Sh- Sean L- L- Levy episode were both ones that um, 
when they they finished both of them one was in person one was over zoom they both made a point of saying man i just want to say i was really not looking forward to a day of press but that was such a good conversation like press or otherwise i'm glad i'm glad i had that um and i really appreciate you doing the work and you've clearly got the knowledge and all that and both of them i maybe with james mangold maybe i wasn't no i think i was an actor at, at that point but yeah i think i might have mentioned it in that one as well but both of them i thought well fuck man i've made a huge impression with these yeah huge directors and producers and then yeah not had a peep since it's always no, that exactly. it's always that thought of i won't chase them up immediately but obviously the, the episode will come out and i'll tag them on socials and I've got a blue tick, and hopefully it'll make him go, all oh, right, yeah, that was cool, and then we can start this thing. It's just not happened with either of them. <laughs> oh, well, a good impression was made anyway. You never know. Exactly. Um, and I, again, I think there is something in that as well. When I did the film Walk Like a Panther, the amount of people on that set that I'd done a podcast with, yeah. it just meant it was a relaxing set because there was Michael... S- S- soccer on there um there was david johns um obviously stephen graham and rob parker but there was so many people on that set that i'd already done a podcast with and then a one or two that i podcasted with while we were filming it um yeah and it just meant even though i had a small role i buddied up with all these people like it it felt like it felt there was enough people who were instantly like all right pip so you feel like you're part of the gang straight away rather than yeah. yeah, turning up and awkwardly introducing yourself. Yeah, that's the thing now. You've got, you know, 500 connections out of yeah. this. And obviously yeah. some of them are stronger than others. Uh, but yeah. I imagine a load of them have actually led to things, you know, yeah. cool things happening. Yeah. If not yeah. necessarily acting roles, but just other opportunities or getting it in. And when you've needed another guest, you've got a connection from a previous podcast. Or And often great. they've just made relationships deeper. Like there's there's a fair few people who the conversation that we have on the podcast because there's yeah. you'll discuss with loads of podcasters you don't have those conversations with your pals in general so I I yeah. know that the first one that me and Stevie Graham did we were already close but that first episode got deep and it really mm. kind of I remember finishing that and him being like man I've realised oh, wow. stuff you've helped me realise stuff about my career that I didn't realise or about my life and things things like that and it really and similar yeah. with uh, Nick Frost and a few others, all people who always had love for and always kind of been lucky enough to call a pal for a long time. But we've had some deep conversations on the podcast that really f- firm that up. And I said, so regardless of leading to anything opportunity-wise or career-wise, it's enriched numerous f- f- friendships with people that I'm really glad to call a friend. So, yeah, it's dope. Amazing. That is lovely. Um, Another guest I'd like to hear about, or at least, you know, a a general question about guests, and maybe you can pick out a few, but, um, or episodes in general that have surprised you. Maybe an episode that you were putting out and you were thinking, well, this one will do okay and it's blown up, or for whatever reason, like an episode that's gone out and you've you've either been surprised by the interview itself or by the reaction. It's a tough one because... It's rare I'm surprised by the reaction because when I finish an episode, I'm like, that okay, was yeah. the shit. That was, <laughs> that was really good. I guess, I mean, I, I feel like I bring it up all the time. Surprised by the reaction, I would say the Mary J. Blige one because it's not mm. the biggest podcast episode in the history of podcasts. And I feel it should be. It's Mary J. fucking Blige. I remember that yeah. not blowing up as much as I expected. Um, and I felt it was a really good chat. Um, or this, I felt the second half was a, a, a really good ch- chat. It's a weird one, but um, so I guess, yeah, some surprise there. Um, the recent one with Caitlin Driva, Divas, Deva, and I can't say anyone's name. I, I learn <laughs> it all on the day and then forget instantly. Um, <laughs> yeah. That was a really n- nice surprise one because it was very press junkety. I didn't know how she would be. I was a big fan. Um, and again, I've mentioned th- this before. I try and f- I often try and find early on a connection so that we've it kind of turns it from being just a press junkety thing. And we'd worked with um, 
are the same actor uh, recently, and I knew they were close, so I brought them up. And then the conversation was just really enjoyable, and it had one of my favourite distraction pieces moments where I'd asked a question, and she's going, well, yeah, at that point, um, I spent a lot of time in LA because my and my dad was the voice of Barney the Dinosaur. So we went on and did this, and then she told this big, <laughs> long story. And I'm sitting there like, a professional interviewer would just ask the next question. I listened. I genuinely l- l- listened. But as soon as she finished, I was like, just quickly, your dad was the voice of B- B- Barney the Dinosaur. And again, it just caused this really nice conversation to come out about because yeah. something that was completely natural in her life so she doesn't think of it as a big deal but it's like if i'm if someone's hearing that for the first time that's a huge deal so, so yeah that was a really nice one and again it was another one that i did a press junket a week or two later with the same press team and one of the people there made a point of saying that caitlin was t- talking about that interview for the rest of the day and, and saying how great it was so Amazing. again those things do r- remind you that you're doing something that's worthwhile and you're doing it the right way because again it is also, I mean, we can get into this, but as you said, when I started this, there weren't a lot of podcasts. There's now a lot of podcasts, mm-hmm. and that has affected my listening numbers. Also, the fact that I try to to focus on content rather than just big names. Yeah. Again, there's points that I've had real dips in, in listenership. So having the, those moments that make you go, no, 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 the content is good, regardless of peaks or or troughs in listenership it's 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 knowing that's see that was a surprising one in that it felt like we hit it off so much and it was so nice you never know again particularly with people you don't know you never know how that's going to go down yeah and i imagine there might be some where you'll have preconceptions especially if they're people that you don't know but they but you you've never met but you're aware of and maybe you've listened to or you've seen a lot of their work and so you you know, you have that thing where you sort of are so familiar with them that you kind of yeah. already feel a little bit pally with them. Yeah. And then you get into the chat and you're like, oh, hold on for a sec. They don't know me at all. We don't we're actually building from all. scratch here. I, I, I tell you what was another n- a nice surprise one recently. Mark Mark Mylod. Um, mm. He's a writer and director and producer. And he's like directed on Game of Thrones. Every series of success, succession. He's one of the showrunners on that. Yeah. And he had a film called The Menu. And I knew he was British, but I couldn't find that much about him. And I thought, I almost turned it, it down but because I was like, is this a bit too, I'm a film nerd, I want to hear about this stuff, but no one else mm. is going to want to hear about this stuff. And again, I didn't know much about him. I thought he might be a bit dry. And he was the friendliest, nicest dude in the world. And I was excited because he's done all those big things in America, but he started off on M- 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 Maid Marian and a Merry Men. Oh yes, and, and, <laughs> I remember this. And and and, and sh- shooting stars and just l- loads Crazy. of weird small British things. Yeah, and he was so good at talking and was so engaging and exciting and and lovely. And that was one that I said I went in. There's there's every now and then there'll be ones that you're like, you get to the day or the day before and you're like, I wish I hadn't agreed to this because as you know it's as we've talked about doing one every week for five 500 episodes for in the ninth year it's a lot so there will be ones every now and then that i'm like oh, i've i've looked through the pr thing at the moment and thought oh that'll be interesting and i'm getting to the day and i'm thinking ah, oh, i'm really busy at the moment i can't yeah. be bothered to do this prep and to to, to force this conversation and kind of every time I've thought that, it's been an absolute joy. And that was was one of them. Again, I'll put my hands up. I went into that like, no, before I did the prep, as soon as I saw things like my, my, my Maid Marin in that on there, I was like, well, at least I'm going to have fun, even if he's yeah, even yeah. if he's a dry or not very exciting guy. But he was an absolute joy. So that's a really good episode. But it's often those ones, mate. It's often those ones that probably don't do numbers or get overlooked because – if you look, if you've not tuned in for a couple of weeks and you look and you see um, St- Stephen Fry, Lena Heady, and Mark Mylod, 
you're probably going to skip Mark Milo because it's not a name that jumps out. And again, because there's so many more podcasts now, I think the feedback I get the most is that people enjoy the episodes that, that surprise them, that are people they didn't know. But I think that happened a lot more in the early days when there weren't as many options because I do it myself now. Where In yeah. the early days, I'd have Buxton and Herring and a couple of others. I'm listening to whoever they have on. Now, Wednesday comes and I've yeah. got 20 different podcasts all popping up in my feed and 10 more on Thursday. Yeah, And I'll look at the guests and I'll go, oh, I don't really know that person. I'll go straight on to Off Menu or I'll go straight on to, to whatever else. And, oh, yeah. yeah, Wednesday I think that used to be your day. Now. Yeah, exactly. I was the Wednesday podcast and now everyone's a Wednesday podcast. But yeah. But yeah, again, I love all of it. As as you know, it's it's why we started Pod Bible was because I do think the more the merrier. And I'd, I've always preached that. I've always tried to promote other podcasts. That has been been about a year or two ago. That did start to get tested when I did start to see <laughs> other podcasts getting tens of millions of listens and mine dro- dropping slightly. I'm like, I was the first guest on Off Menu and I shouted about it as loud as anyone. Yeah, and now they've got a far bigger podcast than me, and then Blind Boy and numerous others who've got huge or whatever. I'm like, maybe I need to shut up a bit and stop. <laughs> but then, nah, I'm not up for that at all. It's not about that. It's about having a, a, a grander range of podcasts and everyone in there. I love it. Yeah, when you see these people just tip up who've got no history of this kind of thing, and yeah. then they suddenly like they've been given a podcast and they've got huge guests and they're top of the charts. So and, you're like, and oh, okay. Pals, when Chris Ramsey and my birthday twin and someone who's yeah. been on the podcast who came to my Edinburgh Fringe show, I went to his show. He, he used to play my music at the start of his shows. I've Amazing. known Chris for a while and I adore him. He started a podcast and I know that my podcast was one of the first he listened to. He started one. I was like, oh, that would be good. And then they started playing stadiums yeah, or arenas actual, or whatever. And it was like, arenas, yeah. it's like, what? Selling what? out thought... arenas, <laughs> multiple nights. Yeah. Multiple nights at arenas. It's like, <sighs> oh. <laughs> but again, that I, 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 I genuinely had a week or two of kind of starting to be, man, this is getting frustrating. But then that, that went away really quickly because it's just great that. Yeah. Everyone knows what podcasts are now, and there's and it's a whole industry. It's not just this little Definitely. thing that you have to explain to people every time you mention it. So, yeah, yeah. I think I remember in in one of the lockdowns, I was out for a walk, my my daily allocated walk, and I got something. I saw something on Twitter about Louis Theroux launching okay. his podcast, Grounded. And around that time, obviously, loads of people had started doing pods because people were at home and they're like, well, we can record some stuff, record some conversations. And I was massively overwhelmed from a pod Bible point of view because I was like, oh, my God, how are we going to cover all of this? Yeah, This is too much. And actually, it's quite annoying because I can't listen to everything. Yeah, yeah. And I used yeah. to listen to like my favorite shows. I'd listen to every episode. And now I'm going to yeah. have to spread myself a bit more thin. But then I did, yeah, I quickly realized, like, actually, no, this is good because if Louis Theroux's got a pod that he's shouting about, or people are going to be Googling Louis Theroux and finding out he's got a pod, then it's more people listening to podcasts and then more people checking out, oh, there are other podcasts, and then more people potentially finding your show mm-hmm. or finding yeah. out about Pod Bible exactly. or whatever it may be. And it's all it's all good. It's all good, really. And Louis made um, having tech issues at the start a cliche, so that's yeah. kind of dried up on a lot of podcasts. Not many podcasts are leaving that, that bit in anymore because – as soon yeah. as the big guys do it, you're like, "Oh no, it's not, it's not cool anymore." <laughs> no, exactly. That was so good. And now he's now he's with Spotify, and yeah, uh, well, that's a whole other conversation. Huge, isn't it? So what? Um, I mean, you're at episode 500, and I do. Yes. I think that is that is pretty mad, considering uh, that you have had no gaps and no breaks and everything like that. Yeah. Are we going on for another 500? Yeah, I think so. At the moment, as you know, I like to 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 walk out on things <laughs> like yeah. i stopped my music career this would at be its a... kind of peak i stopped the radio show at its peak but yeah yeah i've it? no plans <laughs> to stop yet as i said last year was i had a couple of times where i was tempted having Stephen fry on that felt like a really good ending yeah and having G- gasper noe on both felt like really good endings because they're both just peaks for, for me but then another awesome guest gets offered and another awesome conversation comes in and it's like, right, now, nah, I'm, 
I'm not in any rush to, to, uh, to end it yet. I, I can see at some point if if certain things in film and TV came in, I would have to break. That I can can see the streak being broken at some point. Yeah. Um. Of of one every week, but at the moment, yeah, I don't see it ending. I don't see when that would be broken. But, 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 but yeah, there's just a few things where a lot like if I get to to direct a film, then things like that, it might be like I can't be messing about trying to make sure I've got. An interview in and things like that because that'll yeah, be that's fair enough. My, my life for a bit, but but who knows? And again, I love Chatterbix re- did this recently, but Richard Herring has done it in the past loads. Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin, I, I used to do it a lot, but re releasing old episodes, I think, can be w- w- wicked. I've had that before, like on, on the Chatterbix ones recently, there was. They re-released all their guests, all their their previous guest episodes, and I listened to almost every episode of that. And a few popped up that I was like, "Oh man, I did." I downloaded it, yeah. But because of it. and this is now a bit of hate, but, but because of the change in the way the Apple Podcast app has gone, mm. I miss stuff easier. I forget stuff, and then I'm on to the next episode, and so on and so forth. So yeah. Things like that are good. So yeah, if I ever did have to stop, I think I'd I'd hit Buddy Peace up to go. Do, do, do you want to start working your way through the old episodes and picking them out? Because again, as you say as well, five hundred episodes means there's a lot of episodes from the early days that people w- weren't aware of or might yeah. not go back to, like the Full Fact episode or the, the Simon Singh episode or stuff that won't necessarily jump out as a name immediately. Yeah. No, definitely, and I think it's exciting that because I, 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 you know, thought about asking the classic question of who's your dream guest or who would you like to get, but I think the way things work is that you know there'll there'll be people that you'll be really excited to have on that you don't even know about yet, like yeah. the next yeah. you know big musician or an actor will come out of the blue or some something will blow up. Like I remember Auntie Donna when that was suddenly yeah. massive on Netflix, and then you suddenly just arranged that chat with them, and yeah. right in that moment, that yeah. was exactly the thing I wanted to hear. It was the perfect. Um, I mean, um, yeah. Florence Pugh is a prime example of that. That yeah. I just watched one F- F- Florence Pugh film and was blown away, and we started talking on t- Twitter, and then we had that first podcast chat, and then she blew up and became one of the biggest stars in the world, and then she came on again on the mental health yeah, specials, so and that was just mind blowing. It's like you're huge, and you, and she was so honest and open about some real trauma in her life, and it was like man this is amazing and that was someone that was again if i hadn't had florence on when i did florence would be on my list as a dream guest now yeah do you know what i mean it's that weird thing it's like oh there's probably dream guests i've already had on that (laughs) are going to get bigger and uh, um, um, and bigger i had i had um, uh, and chad her patel on recently and he's great and i'm convinced he's going to be a superstar and that's going to be like a Florence or when I had Riz Ahmed on or who, whomever else that when you had then Brett goes Goldstein, on. Yeah, he Brett was just Goldstein, a, yeah. a lowly comedian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when I have any of these on and it's like they then go on to be huge and you're like, right, that's now that episode yeah. is probably going to do more numbers as a back catalogue episode than it ever did that's on week of release. And actually, and yeah, those like are the ones that are worth you know bringing out for those those periods yeah. when you're away. Because I remember, um, and we'll wrap things up soon, but um, Brett, obviously he does films to be buried with and he had to have a bit of a break because his career was taking off yeah. and he was really busy. And I think I remember you saying that you'd had a conversation that he was like, I don't want to break the streak. And you're just like, well, don't worry about it. And, but then he, um, he put out some of those, those, those yeah. previous episodes, Classics. but then he's able to, you're able to sort of revisit and do a little intro and, and yeah. talk about why that episode meant so much to you at the time and yeah. that kind of thing. And as you said, there'll be loads of people who don't know about them. So. Yeah. And just intros of, of, <laughs> of Riz or, or Florence all you'd need to do is here's all the things that have happened since this episode yeah. and it's like huge Oscar nominations all sorts of prizes yeah and yeah. then here we go here's a dip into the past so, yeah. Yeah, maybe that'll be a thing at some point but on, on, on all those things I want to hold off on them until I need them do you know what yeah. I mean even though it'd be quite interesting at the moment I've still got really interesting conversations that I I have got time to uh, to have and do. So yeah, 
Yeah, amazing. Cool. Well, I think we've pretty much covered all the things I was interested to cover. Um, yeah. 500 episodes deep. I did get your book out. There it is. Uh, Time's, Time's best seller, that. What's mad about this is that this came out in 2016. So this was just three years into the pod. Mm. And you've done another, well, you're into yeah for another five, six years since then. It's mad, um, isn't it? We should do another one at some point, but yeah, I really enjoyed reading the forward by Ramesh Ranganathan. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's glowing, yeah. <laughs> which uh, deservedly so, but it's really nice. But what I've uh, what I found interesting, he refers to some of his guests, uh, some of your guests, some of his favourite episodes, and he says um, it's delightfully eclectic in its concerns, from discussion f- from discussing football with murder and successful star Tom Davis, and then he talks about others. And now he's got chart topping podcast with yeah. Tom Davis, their absolute best mates. How mad is that? I, I, I wonder if they even knew each other back then. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't I mean, it's know a long time did. ago. That's fascinating. Yeah. Um, but I'm yeah, to, 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 to find out if I'm I'm responsible for their uh, another big podcast that I'm responsible for. <laughs> I know. Who recently did a drunk <laughs> episode as well, which was very popular. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Um. Well, thanks, Pip. I mean, it is you. it is pretty mad because, as I said, I was a massive fan and I still am a massive fan of the podcast, but um, I used to listen week in, week out to every single episode, start to finish, all the ads. I'd let them play through. I was a yeah. great listener for you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I think it's a, just a, a bloody good podcast because you are genuinely and genuinely interested in your guests. Yeah. Um, and it's clear that you've done the research uh and uh you've had some of the most enlightening conversations that i've heard in audio so thank you from me but thank you from pod bible and here's to the next however many episodes we won't put pressure on it but um yeah here's to the future of distraction pieces i can't wait thank you mate